Welcome to my September reading wrap up. All of the books I read this past month, I have some surprising reads on here. I surprised myself with really enjoying some classics and then also maybe my first five star read of 2024. I'm still undecided. However, I think I have to. Like it was so good. I haven't been that excited to pick up a book like as I'm reading it in a long time. Also, it was YA, so shocking events in this video. Anyways, let's get started. You're kidding. It was so good. I think because of how peculiar the storyline was, yet how realistic. Because like, yes, everyone always writes the same mystery, the same. Yes, and it was so like, uh, it was an obvious, really good story, yet like, where did you come up with this? This is so weird. She tied like fiction, historical fiction feelings with a mystery thriller. Okay, anyways, apparently we're starting with the five-star read. <laughs> Death at Morning House. Oh my gosh, Maury Johnson, what the crap. I, maybe Truly Devious was this good when I first read it. I read it years ago when it first came out and I've read all of the, there's like what, five, six in the series now? It feels like a lot. I didn't give all the books that I read ratings back then, so I don't know if I would have given this five-star read. Probably because I've read every single one in the series and it's like a fairly long series. And I just love those books. So probably would be a five star read, but oh my gosh, Death at Morning House. What the crap? I was so excited to read this. There's something about the storyline that is just so bizarre and also incredible. It gives a little bit of like Wednesday Adams, like the Adams Family vibes. Don't be a baby. I know what I'm doing. So it's this single guy. He is a doctor and he adopts all of these infants. There are so many twists and turns along the way and so many like surprising events at the end. You have two alternating timelines. One is in the 1930s and then one is in like modern day. The modern day at the beginning, I was like, am I gonna like this book? And I set it down for a second because I was reading like five other books at the time. And sometimes when I do that, I'm like, okay, I need to just like pause. First couple of chapters where it's following the main character, I wasn't totally bought in on. Her name's Marlo because it feels very YA at the beginning, but just stick with it because it gets so good. So Marlo, an event happens where she like literally wants to die, not like in a sad way, but in a like, oh my God, I'm so thoroughly embarrassed and I'm young. I'm in my hometown and everyone knows something about me kind of a way. So then she wants to kind of run away. Opportunity is presented to her. And that is when she gets kind of entangled into this 1930s timeline, which the 1930s timeline is like the five star part. The 1930s timeline is about the siblings that get adopted by this doctor. He's single, he ends up getting married but they all live together on this island part-time and then part-time in New York. But some weird things start happening in the family. All of the children are a little bit bizarre. Anyways, the whole eugenics like theme is fascinating and that's the part that I'm like, it is gripping. If you don't know what eugenics is, it's like the idea that the weak die off, only the strongest, smartest, purest survive and should be allowed to continue to reproduce and survive and it was really big like in real life it was really big in the like yeah 1920s 30s 40s I don't know when it kind of like died off it's just so intriguing so anyways enough about this book you just need to read it it's so good you will fly through it can't say enough good things about it also look at this cover are you kidding love so my next read was a kindle read if only I had told her this is also an author that I have read before and I had high expectations for this. If he had been with me, was devastating. That book murdered my soul and I have not been the same since. <laughs> that is probably the actually like saddest book. It's not even the saddest, that's not the right word. It's like the most regret and like grief filled loss, just like I screwed up and it is irreparable in like the most YA way possible. That book will get you. If you like need to, to like get back into reading, read that book. So I had high expectations for If Only I Had Told Her, which is the um, MMC's perspective. I was sorely disappointed, which Audrey hasn't read it yet. I was putting it off forever. It has, it had come out like obviously ages ago, well ages ago, months ago. And I just kept putting it off. I didn't want to read it because I was like, I'm not ready for that type of de devastation that came with if he had been with me. I gave it a 2.5 stars. 
The beginning was good. It was a decent book. I'm kind of glad I read it, but also you like kind of get no, no new information. Like it just wasn't, I was like really into it at the beginning, like really excited, really into it. It's his perspective of like the events leading up to what happens, what happens. But then it switches to the best friend of the MMC's perspective and it's all right, but it's not as good. And then the third timeline or the third perspective is the main female character from or if he had been with me. And I feel like from each perspective, it just gets like worse and worse and worse and not in just like a boring way. Like it just gets less and less interesting and less emotional. And then it ends up by the end of the book, I'm like, oh, oh that kind of did nothing for me. And if I hadn't, if it wasn't a sequel, I would have DNF'd it. My next book was a reread, Stargirl. I read this for the Taylor Swift. I read like Taylor Swift for a week video. It was a fun one. It's so short and it's definitely for a very young audience, but it is also a fun one and it kind of does like even as an adult make you think like, do I need to change my life a little bit? It's a bit like Perks of Being a Wallflower, Me, Earl and the Dying Girl mixed with Eloise and Ramona Quimby, Judy Jones vibes. So it's definitely like existential, angsty, and makes you want to be, makes me want to be a better man, you know? You make me want to be a better man. Like it makes you want to leave more of an impression on people and just like do the most with the life that you have, which I'm all about. But because it's obviously written for a very young audience, like straight up middle school vibes, I give it a three stars. However, such a good book and I'm glad I read it because it's, yeah, so short. Just like a fun reread. The next book was A Wild Time because I was very skeptical of if I was going to like this. It is Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. I was so excited to read a Bronte sisters book. I really want to cover them on Blood and Business. I'm fascinated by their family. How many writers and artists just came out of that family is like wild to me. Like I just want to know all of the like psychology, sociology, like nature nurture part of that. So I want to read at least one book from all Bronte, all of the Bronte siblings. I was pleasantly surprised, let me tell you. I thought it was going to be kind of a chore. Sometimes I feel like classics or non-fictions, you enjoy reading them, but it's kind of like annoying to pick up or with fiction, especially like fantasy or romance that you're really into, you're like dying to get back into it. You like want to pick it up all the time when you're not reading, you're thinking about it. I feel like sometimes with classics or with nonfiction, you enjoy it while you're reading it. But if like when you set it down, the feeling of like wanting to pick it back up just like isn't there. You know what I mean? Because of that, I went into this with low expectations, obviously. Also with how big it is, I, it was just like a daunting task before me. However, I loved this book so much. I was, when I wasn't reading, I was like ready to get back into it. And not because the story was so riveting, it was just interesting. Like it was not super emotional, but you follow this girl from childhood and she's kind of like this misfit, loud, obnoxious, very emotional child who doesn't have any parents and is living with a family member and that family member is like giving evil stepmother vibes and so there's like all of that conflict then she gets not sent away necessarily but like kind of sent away and then it follows her kind of growing up i think she's probably honestly only like maybe in her late 20s or 30s is when it ends but it ends with like a significant life event but it reads like a girl's journal which it's not a bronte journal but it's like kind of a literary fiction i guess it, it's definitely a classic and it took me a minute to get into it i was probably like halfway through chapter four before i was like okay i like this book before that it was kind of like i was getting my bearings on how reading a classic just I don't know, you just have to like be in the right mindset to like get into that type of language and understand and process. It like uses a different part of your brain, I swear, than like reading fantasy or like modern literature. That took me a minute, but once I got my bearings, I was fully bought in and I love the morality of Jane Eyre. I love her personality. Um, I like her perspective and just like, I don't know, like she just has a cool personality and the things that happen with her love interests is so interesting and the way that she chooses and doesn't choose certain people and certain paths in life, I just love. I think she might be an Enneagram one because it, she's very motivated by like morality, what's right, practicality, but she's also very uh, like, I don't know, challenger. So she might be an eight. I don't know, it's just really interesting. 
I was pleasantly surprised. I also wasn't expecting the ending. I was kind of like irritated probably like three fourths of the way through the book and was like, what the crap? And then it all just wraps up so well and perfectly and ends on a perfect note. So I give this one a 4.5 stars. Simply so good. Okay, then I read a Kindle Unlimited book because I was just kind of like searching for something to read on my Kindle as one does. I always have to have like an audiobook, a Kindle, and at least one physical book going at all times. I didn't have a Kindle one at the moment, so I thought I would pick up a romance because I just haven't been reading romance and I'm like, I don't know, I feel like that's a kind of a staple uh, genre that people like to hear about and that I liked to read for like a hot minute and now I'm like, maybe I just am over that for right now. Except for now I've picked up a fantasy romance and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm in for. This is the story that I want. I started reading Things We Never Got Over because I've seen the cover freaking everywhere. I had picked it up once before, but I was kind of going through like a... I was kind of being a, not a purist, but like I was kind of going through uh, like what am I okay with reading and like what do I want to be spending my time on? And I was in a big nonfiction season. So I started reading it and I like kind of really liked it, but also was like, I don't want to be freaking reading this narrative. So I put it down and then I picked it back up because I was like, okay, I remember kind of liking it when I originally picked it up. And maybe I was being like too conservative at the moment with my picks and two Enneagram one like chill out Bethany it's fine no it wasn't fine I got like five pages in and I was like okay I'm not reading this it's not the spice it it's like the vulgar like I don't want like morals aside just with like the uh wit the where I live and the people I hang out with there's not a lot of cursing happening at all I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins <laughs> And so when I'm reading it and someone curses, it's a bit jarring. Like Tony Robbins always says, I curse to like wake people up and get people to listen because like being cursed at is a little bit jarring. That's fine every once in a while. When it's like five times per freaking Kindle page, which is like half of a, if not a third of a normal page, I'm like, I can't even get into the book because all I'm doing is like so annoyed by the unnecessary language. Anyways, I feel like an 80 year old saying this, but that's why I do have it at like literally not even 10 pages in. Okay, this next one, I feel like I'm gonna get hate for. However, I was warned and I thought that they were crazy and they officially, actually, literally were not crazy. They were right. Uh, I DNF'd Once Upon a Broken Heart. I, again, don't know if I wasn't in the right headspace, but Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, on paper, I should love it. It's fantasy, it's romance, it's like a fairy tale type thing. Like I felt like I was like missing something. Like I started the book and it wasn't like an exciting like, oh, I feel like I'm missing a piece of information. I like need to keep reading to like figure out what it is. And I, it wasn't intentional. I just couldn't get into it. And I was like, just so confused because things were happening and I was like, why is this happening? Could not get into it. And it's on everybody's like five star list. And everybody is so excited for her to write more and blah, 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 all this stuff. And I was like, I just could not get into it. So Haley talked about this like it was going to be the next Twilight. Sold me on it. I loved the vlog where she was talking about it and reading it. Literally so much. Was so confident that I was going to love this book. That I bought the sequel before even reading the first book. Nothing happens. Literally nothing happens. I don't know if people love this book because they haven't read a lot of fantasy or if I'm completely just missing something. The chemistry between the FMC and the MMC, it's just not enough. Like, I don't even know if we're rooting for them or not. There's no feel there are no feelings there on my end. I think just mostly it's just boring for me. Like nothing is happening and I got 66% of the way through, well over halfway through the book and still didn't care about the characters or the storyline was not invested at all. So I do. <laughs> Okay, then the next book was a library pick, which I had out for way too long and was like about to put my account on freaking hold. But I just didn't think I was going to read it. It was a part of my TBR Jar Picks My September Reads. It was the one with the peach on the cover that I was like, is this going to be erotica? It wasn't. The spice was like very minimal. But I DNF'd it at like almost 200 pages in because... I didn't care about what was happening. And it's definitely it's supposed to be a little bit mystery thriller. I feel like it was supposed to be more psychological thriller than it actually was. I don't know. I don't know if I'm just like missing the point or if I'm just not that invested in it. It was definitely supposed to be, which I compared it to this in that 
TBR Draw Picks My September Reads, I compared it to the movie Personal Shopper with Kristen Stewart in it, and it's definitely giving that vibe, but that movie also, like, where is the thriller? Where is the mystery part of it? I'm not freaked out enough to be entertained by this, but it was better than I thought. Like, I was really into it at the beginning, but then, not, like, literally, I think it just drags on for too long. It should have been, like, a 200-page book, like, literally happened, like, so quickly because I feel like, I mean, I don't even know what ends up happening, but whatever ends up happening, like, definitely something is going to happen. It just shouldn't take me that long to, I don't know. You need to give me a little bit more breadcrumbs, a little bit more like, and I need to be a little bit more invested into like the questioning of like, what's going on here? What am I not, you know what I mean? Anyways, so unfortunately I also did that book. I got 164 pages into it and then just returned it to the library because. Okay, so then I have my three nonfiction reads for the month, the Nicene Crane, the Nicene Crane. <laughs> I'm talking for too long, dude. Um, the Nicene Creed. I feel like I'm normally pretty good at reading um, classic literature and just like old spiritual philosophical philosophy. <laughs> can, can she read at all at this point? Can the boy tell time? Oh my lord, no. Yes, can the boy tell time? Oh my lord, no. No. Okay. Anyways, this and then I, I literally am like flipping to the front because I'm like, when was this written for me to be so thoroughly confused? Like this was definitely over my head and I was having to Google and I was having to like sit there and reread sentences like three times to truly understand what was happening. And I still feel like I don't totally understand like were they telling me that the Virgin Mary was a virgin or not? You know what I mean? Was a little confused on some chapters, but then some chapters were like so good and made me think about things completely differently to what I had in the past. Therefore, I'm giving it a three stars because some of the chapters absolutely loved. Some of the chapters, I was like, why are you talking about genetic mutation? I don't even like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't think that I'm that like skeptical or that scientific or philosophical to be wanting to read this. Like someone who needs more convincing maybe, I don't know, this is, this book is for them. I don't regret reading it because I do think that I took, I had some good takeaways. Um, I want to read another commentary on the Nicene Creed that is a little bit more modern. And then Tolkien, which was such a fun one. I feel like I just think about C.S. Lewis and Tolkien and the Inklings and just the way that they viewed life like so much because of this book. I. I have always loved C.S. Lewis, just been, I mean, I've talked about him so much on the channel. Love C.S. Lewis, love his fiction, his nonfiction, have read all of his books. Anyways, I just love him. I want to read a C.S. Lewis biography next. I feel like this book gave a really good neutral perspective on Tolkien's life and told a lot of the positives, the good, the amazing qualities that Tolkien had and the bad, negative, critical, toxic qualities. It is also so cool. I'm one of those people who is like, I do want to meet my heroes, quote unquote, because it is encouraging to me. That's the biggest thing that I think Blood and Business has even done for me, covering those stories, talking about MLK, and Frank, Meep Geese, all of the Kennedys, all of the people who you look up to. When I see their flaws, it is an encouragement to me because I'm like, okay, I know all of my flaws way too well. They still went on and did incredible things. They still were the hands and feet of Jesus it's not too much for me. Like maybe I could possibly have a similar impact or contribution to this life. So yeah, I give this one a four stars. I feel like I wasn't like gripped by the story. I also am really glad I read it and would recommend it to people who like biographies. So that's what I think about that. And I'm also gonna just be like thinking about all the fun facts that I know. And I haven't read a lot of biographies like front to back because with Blood and Business, Cassie does all of that research and I just get to hear the story. So I feel like I know a lot that biographies would give me. I just have not read them or gotten them through the podcast. So, okay, last but not least, what did I read for my Bible study this month? I finished Revelation, finally. Riveting, got me thinking more like the end of the world is coming more than ever before. I also read Hebrews, I think because of a sermon that I had listened to, got me into Hebrews. And then we read Jonah as our family Bible study. And then I finished all of Matthew as well. However, I'm going back through and reading um, with commentary now and I'm on chapter 18 with that. So I'm gonna finish that off probably next month. But anyways, it was a pretty like 
I feel like Bible heavy um, month. And I also feel like it wasn't a, because of Jane Eyre being so long and then reading the Nicene Creed so thoroughly and then extra Bible study time. I feel like I didn't read a ton of fiction. So I'm like excited for next month to get into fantasy and like all of the fall reads. We've got our fall TBR coming out. Me and Audrey are doing that together. So stay tuned for that. Definitely turn on the bell notifications, subscribe, like, give it a thumbs up, all of that kind of stuff and be ready for those videos. A couple of changes coming to the channel as well. So I'm excited about that. That was all of the books I read in September. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.